Here's the mail, it never fails It makes me wanna wag my tail When it comes I wanna wail Actually I don't wanna wail Cause I get this mail in a post office And that would scare people Usually my reaction is Wow, that's really cool Hey everybody, welcome to Mailbag Thursday. My name is David and I'm gonna open up some stuff. You guys sent me, uh, actually I got more than three packages. Last time I opened four, um, that took like a long time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to three from now on. So uh, I do have three other letters in the pack, or two of the letters in the package that I'll open up next week. But this is what I'm opening up this week. Uh, something from Europe, or as I say where it's actually from? It's from the UK. And then these two letters uh, from the state. So as per my tradition, I will open up largest to smallest. What's interesting about this package is I can I can feel there's something in like, it feels like like a large pen. And on the back, it says that there is a key ring and confectionery in the customs declaration. He also drew a little, I'm guessing that's Link. And then the Ock male symbol logo thing. So that's cool. I'm a little scared I'm gonna cut something that you guys like don't want me to cut. So I'm trying to be more careful. All right, so let me read the letter first. This is from There's no name again. All right, so the letter inside, there's a sweet, uh, really cool drawing in the back. It says Doc, Jazz, and different designs on the letters. And then there's an ocarina with some notes, treble clef, some notes down here, and another 12-hole ocarina. So that's pretty sweet. It says, hey, David, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you very much for asking. As I write this, I'm currently on holiday by the sea, and I thought it would be nice to send you something as a gift from the seaside. Awesome. I do apologize for my handwriting, but I will write as clearly as I can. The beach is a lovely place, and of course I have brought my ocarina to play by the sea, which I am, which I have yet to do. I've never done that either, actually. Like, I've been to the sea, and I brought an ocarina with me, but I was so distracted because I had a guitar, and I was singing with some friends, which is cool, too. I asked you about some scales in my last letter, and you posted a sheet for me, so thank you very much. However, I found a musical reading book with scale section, and it has loads of scales. I'm sorry this small package isn't as good as my last one, but I brought my ocarina on holiday, and it made me think of you. Do you have any tips for improvising whilst playing the ocarina, or is it just a matter of playing lots and lots? Thanks for all of your help on my last letter. Take care, Daniel. Oh, Daniel! Daniel sent me a cool package last time. Let me see what you sent, and then I will answer your question. So we have a Wales keychain which has a strange name in the back. Kaimru? Kaim Is that the name of this dragon? And you sent me candy. That's awesome. I think it's candy. It's rock flavored candy. Oh wait what? It's flavored rock candy. That's awesome. I'm actually leaving on a trip tomorrow, so I will probably take one of these to eat on the way. And it says they're made in England. That's really cool. English candy. Thank you for the stuff, Daniel. And uh, I uh, I do have a couple tips for improvising. Um, let's see. I think a really good uh, way to... Well, let me just take a step back. When you're improvising with any musical instrument, it's not like you're pulling stuff uh, out of like thin air, like really cool riffs and stuff. What you're actually doing is you're pulling from a palette of uh, stuff that you've heard before or stuff that you've practiced ahead of time. Uh, so it's really good for you to listen to other uh, improv improvisations by talented um, musicians. Uh, I like to listen to a lot of jazz improvisation and um, when you listen to the new artists, and you can hear little spots that are um, pulled from other artists before them. Uh, so listen to as many different artists and improvisations as possible. Um, especially for Ocarina, I would say if you listen to Milt, uh, Ocarina Milt, 
or uh, Osawa Satoshi, they love to improvise. Um, it's more ja- jazz, jazzy, but it's really just good stuff to see what kind of stuff sounds good on the ocarina. And then just listen to a bunch of other styles of jazz improvisation. Um, and uh, and you can you can go from there. It really doesn't have to be jazz. It can be any style of music. But jazz improvisation pulls a lot of crazy stuff. So listen to lots of music, and then uh, you can build your, your palette to pull from when you're actually performing. Another cool tip is you can, um, uh, like I said, practice ahead of time. It's really good for you to experiment on these things and just see what sounds best to you. So um, practice these things on your when you're on when you're by yourself and there's no pressure and just see how it sounds, see how it plays on the ocarina, and see how it feels to play it on the ocarina. Little riffs and stuff like that. And then when you actually go out and you perform for people, what's cool is that if you if you practice these riffs enough, um, you'll just have this repertoire of uh, different techniques and different things that you can pull off and mix together and mash up and it's just like uh, having a bowl full of ingredients you have to throw in a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit of this a little bit of that um and so when you get out on stage or when you get in front of friends you know what you can do and how it sounds and you've tried mixing them all together at different points so you you can create this really cool unique um improvisation hopefully that answers your question Thank you again, Daniel. I hope you had a good holiday, and um, I, uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Pretty good. Our next letter comes from Ryan out of Reading. Pennsylvania, and he writes, Dear Doc Jazz, my name is Ryan. I've been a fan of you and your videos ever since I stumbled upon your two Song of Storms videos in 2008. And I must say that I'm so very glad that I did. Your videos have encouraged me to buy three ocarinas, one pendant, one five-hole sweet potato, and one 12-hole sweet potato, all from Songbird. A very good choice. I think it's safe to say, however, if I'd not found you on YouTube, I'd probably still think that ocarinas were a myth from a classic Nintendo game. Thankfully, I now know that ocarinas are very old and an outstanding type of instrument. My absolutely favorite videos of you are Storm's End, Stairway to Heaven, Viva La Vida, Song of Healing, and Dragon Rouge Island Duet. Which leads me to a request. Well, two, if, if you will. One, Kepora Gabor's theme. And two, would you be able to make a video of yourself playing the ocarina to the Death Cab for Cutie song, Grapevine Fires? Thank you for giving us beautiful music and opening the ocarina to the world. Don't lose sight of what astounding and wondrous talents you, you possess. Keep on playing. Love and peace always, Ryan. P.S. Sorry if my handwriting is bad. Well, you typed it, so I don't think you really have to worry about that. Thank you very much for your letter, Ryan, and your very kind compliments. And, um, yeah, that's really cool that you have, you started collecting ocarinas. Um... I actually started off with the five hole sweet potato as well, and uh, I got two pendants after that. It took me a couple years to get a 12 hole. Um, but uh, yeah, I can play Kepora Gabor really quick. That's one of my favorite Zelda songs, and um, I have to look at the Death Cab for Cutie song. I like this song on the deep rock arenas. <laughs>
Good song. I want to learn that one. Listen to it a little bit more. Thank you for the request, and thank you again for the letter. This has to be one of um, my favorite letters that I've gotten, because this is like the cutest stationery that I've seen so far. Uh, not including the cool artwork you guys have sent, but this is just really cute stationery. This is from Alexandria uh, out of Toronto, Ohio. And first, I really like your handwriting. Check that out. That is really cool. And then these cute little bear things on the back. I think no, they're raccoons. And she writes, Hey there, David. I figured I would write a letter today. It gives me a chance to use my fancy stationery. Fancy indeed. Anywho, I'm writing to tell you that you really inspire me to play the ocarina from the heart. You're a fantastic musician, even from the first video of yours I watched. I could tell there was something special about you. You really reflect, reflect a passion for God when you play. As a fellow Christian, I really admire that. I do have a question for you. How do you manage to play the ocarina while in college? I'm nervous that I'll never get to play I never get to play in fear of disturbing my roommates slash neighbors. Any advice for that? I suppose my muse could be quiet enough, hopefully. Anyhow, to summarize, you are one of the coolest dudes on the interwebs. Aw, thank you. I really appreciate your love of music, God, and your fans. You treat all three very well, as far as I can tell. Have a wonderful day, night, week, etc. With love, Alex. And she drew some ocarinas, too. She drew sweet potato, I think? Amuse? Uh, I can't see what the bottom one is. A wireman squid arena? Interesting, and then a bird pendant? <laughs> I want to know where you got the squid ocarina. And then she wrote another, and she added this little note. By the way, thanks to seeing your, your collection of ox, I've become very inspired to expand my collection. I currently own 19 ocarinas. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your letter, Alex. And uh, I guess something that I've learned about playing ocarina around other people is that it's appreciated in spurts. When I was living with my family, they very much appreciated that uh, when I let them know I was going to be recording or practicing ocarina or whatever. And um, it's always cool to, to make sure that the people that you're living with are around, that you ask them and let them know that you're gonna be playing for a little bit. Usually when you do that, um, they're either gonna tell you yes or no, but most of the time, um, especially if they're not your family, they'll tell you yes, they'll, they'll endure it for a little bit. Uh, your family will probably be a little bit more honest and just tell you right out, not right now. But if you're gonna, if you wanna find ways to practice without disturbing people, it's usually best that you go out somewhere and um, just play kind of in the open area where not too many people are around, just to kind of get a feel for what it's like being out there. Cause so sometimes people will hear you play and they'll just come up to you and then just sit by you to listen to you, which is a really cool experience that someone actually wants to hear you play even if you feel like you're not doing very well. Um, and um, you can also find out what your classmate schedules are um, and then just play during that spot of time. So you gotta plan it a little bit better than just being spontaneous. That's it, really. Um, get to know your neighbors and ask them when it's cool you can play. Um, your roommates, too. Play your muse. Yeah, I mean, the muse isn't super quiet, but it's quiet enough that it shouldn't disturb too many people around you. And um, find, op like, a really cool spot on campus to play. Um, there's actually, like, some really nice spots on, um, on my campus that I like to play. It's just, like, open just flowers and lots of green... Um, so it looks pretty sweet just to play out there. And yeah, that's it. Thank you again for your letter and uh, good luck finding a nice spot to play. And I got a quick email from Blaze and he says, I have a double Alto C sweet potato ocarina. Now in most of the music sheets there are two holes on the bottom, but mine only has one. Is there a way to compensate for this? I'm assuming you're talking about uh, like 12 hole tab sheets uh, or 10 hole tabs where they have two thumb holes. Uh, the sweet potato, like you said, only has one thumb hole and that's because it only goes up to D and then E flat and then E is on the second chamber. So uh, when you're looking at the tabs for 12 hole or 10 hole ocarina, just ignore the both thumb holes open up and, because, and then also all holes uncovered because that's going to give you F on a 12 hole. Um, so E is uh, which is two thumb holes, is this position, 
And then uh, all holes uncovered on a 12 hole is, or 10 hole, is this position, which is F. Those are, that's, it's, it's over the chamber switch. Hopefully that answers your question. That's all the letters I have for this week, guys. Um, thank you again for writing. I really appreciate all the mail and uh, candy and really nice stationery that you guys like to send me. Address is in the description below, and um, feel free to leave a comment, or uh, there'll also be an email in the description uh, if you guys don't have the means to actually send me something. I will probably uh, not be able to get to that unless uh, we don't have a lot of mail, but I will do my best to respond in a timely manner if I can. If you're gonna be in Atlanta for Dragon Con this weekend, I will see you guys there in the dealer's room in the Marriott Marquis. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Have a good weekend.